Hello there, good day, and welcome back. So, okay, so we're finally out of um, chapter 5, JavaScript, and we're in chapter 6 now. We'll be talking about AngularJS for now. Now, we're not going to mention any JavaScript or see any JavaScript, but, you know, we're not going to be really covering JavaScript. And that's the reason why we're doing it, is so that we can get into these type of things. So, let's get into it, and let's start talking about what AngularJS is. First, we're going to see AngularJS in action, and then we're going to talk about what it is and what, it's fr what are frameworks and that sort of thing. But let's do the fun stuff first. All right? So, let's do it. So, let me just, let's just jump in, take a look, and then I'll get back to explaining, okay? So, here's an example. Let's say this, I wanted to write a very simple web application, and it looks something like this. Um, I want to prompt for your name, and then when you type your name or as you type it, I'm going to say hello, whatever. So example might be, um, for example, uh, let's say I did type my name, we'll see this. And so let's run this. So I'm using brackets, and I'm going to use the live code view. And so I click on that and wait for it to come up. It starts up a server and, you know, start my browser there. And Chrome, if you're using Chrome, you need Chrome for this, by the way. And so now there's my simple form, and what is your name? And so I should be able to type like Verol, and I see that there. Of course, I art coded Verol here just now, so I can remove that, for example, and there you see. Now, everything on this page so far is stuff you know from before. I haven't done anything new whatsoever. Um, this is from way back in our chapter three when we talk about chapter three, three when we talk about HTML. Um, okay. So um, this is way back uh, when we talk about um, HTML in chapter three. Now, if you look at um, what I'm doing here, maybe I mentioned uh, before about ID tags, ID attributes being used to identify tags in code. You can use JavaScript to look it up. And so I have that there, but I haven't written any JavaScript code. And I have this name attributes also. And I could use either one of these two, two though people mostly use ID. Okay, but I'm not going to focus on that. I just want to show you very simply that this form is basically a um, dumb form, a static form. It doesn't do anything. It's not dynamic in any way. Nothing changes. I can refresh this as many times as I like, and I'll still see the same exact same thing. And of course, me typing in here, nothing happens. So let's um, make this uh, AngularJS application by making a few changes and then see if I can get what I want, which is when I type in this text box, it should change this here. And so I'll just go down and select this. And it will refresh my application. And you notice that the hello, um, you know, that I had there um, went away. But we'll cover that. And I'll show you in the slides just now what exactly I changed. But let's just run the application. The application is running. Let's just test it. So I'm going to type Verol. And notice what happened. As soon as I started typing, if it's empty, there's nothing there. Well, it would look kind of silly to just have hello, comma, blah, blah, blah. So... Um, once I start putting in something, then you see it show up there, right? And so, um, so that's pretty nice. So how exactly did I do this? Well, I used AngularJS application framework to make this possible. And I allow Angular to do all the heavy lifting of, you know, detecting when I type in, in here, if things are changing, and what do I want to update? And you can see uh, here... I have the AngularJS library, and even though I'm calling this a library here that I include, you'll see that I'm going to say AngularJS is actually a framework, and I'll explain that later, the difference between library and framework. And here's where I wanted to replace um, the text that I typed here, and instead of using ID, I use this thing that says this attribute called ng model. And don't worry about it, just accept that this is, think of this as ng variable, or this is something that says uh, this is the name of my variable I want associated with this input and it's going to be bounded to this input in such a way that if you should type in it, it should update this variable and wherever else I use this variable, then I want that value to up show up there also. And if in JavaScript code I happen to update this variable, then that's another way. So you, the user, can update it or I, in the background with JavaScript, as we're going to see much, much later, I could reach out to a server, pull down some stuff, and update this variable, and then the UI for the user will update. So that's one of the reasons why we're using this framework for that side of capability. All right, so um, let me just show you this, how cool this is, and what you get for free just by using this framework. So I'm going to duplicate this line. I'm going to say, 
hi here instead. And I'm going to say hola here. Right? And I'm going to save that. And of course, my page here needs a little bit of refreshing. And uh, maybe I need to open it a little bit. Um, yep, let me open it. And I'm going to type viral here again. And notice how it updated in three places, all real time. Okay? Now, I can assure you, if you try to do this without a framework like Angular or a JavaScript like jQuery or some other framework, JavaScript framework library, you would have to type a lot of JavaScript code to do this. And we'll look at a little bit of that later on, not in this video, because I just want to show you what Angular can do for you. Okay, so now let's explain some of the changes that I've made, okay? Okay, so that was the example, and I hope that piqued your interest to see what kind of things you can do with, for example, Angular and make it more exciting applications than what we did when we covered form, where we just had forms, you could type things in them, and that's it. And so now let's take a look at the magic. So these are the places that I change in the sample code that uh, was just shown. And basically, on line two, I add this thing, this attribute that says ng app to HTML tag. Don't worry about it. I'll explain why you add it there and all that stuff when we start explaining Angular. There's just I'm just showing you what I changed. And then on line 10, instead of using ID, I use this thing that says model. Like I said, um, Think of it as something that says, here is my variable name that I want to be bounded to this input element. Um, and it's going to do two-way binding. And again, don't worry about that. I'm just saying that now. So when I say it again, it doesn't sound like the first time you're hearing it. And two-way binding simply means that I, as a user, when I type into that form, the value I type into the forms gets stored into that variable automatically name. And if in code, behind the scenes, while... Um, I run in some JavaScript in the browser. Let's say I were to update that value. Um, now the, it would be shown to the user also, updated on the UI. And then um, in the P tag there in line 12, I simply say I want to evaluate this variable um, here. Um, and then I have the ng if, so I can hide it and show it based on the condition or the, value, um, the test there. And it tested to see if there's a value for that variable. If the variable is empty, don't show the p tag if there's something in it show it and as you can see what angle is doing is as i'm typing it is evaluating all these things and updating you know the label there um you know the if test and where you see the text being printed out inside the um the p tag so all that is being done and then down at the bottom you see i included um the angular javascript files okay so um what is Angular then? You saw the magic that it seemed to perform just now in our simple application. So Angular is what you call a app, uh, web application framework. And we can explain what a framework is in a bit. But think of a framework as a um, environment or um, a set of tools that help you write your application quickly. And Angular in particular is what you call a single page web application framework. We might hear people say SPA. Now, frameworks generally provide a lot of library, um, number of libraries for you to call in addition to the call in your code. So a framework basically provides hooks for you to say, if you want to build an Angular application, web application quickly, here's where you put this function and that function, you define X, Y, and Z, and I'll take care of all the heavy lifting or most of the heavy lifting for you. So you just do these very simple things. And one of those things we could see is by simply using ng model on our input element, Angular took care of wiring up that variable name with the input on a number of events. It, it wired it up for the input label on the unchanged events because you could see as I was typing, it updated the thing. So that's an unchanged event. It, um, it made sure that oh, it wrote it to the value and noted all the other places where that variable was being used. And so it would know to up those other places. So all that was being done behind the scenes for us. So that's where the every lifting come in, comes in. Because you can see if you wanted to do this without Angular, it would be quite a bit of code. Or if you wanted to do it without a library like Angular or uh, either with a framework like Angular or a JavaScript library like jQuery, you would have to do a lot of code, write a lot of code. Um, and so uh, a library, um, tends to give you a number of reusable code. I mentioned um, jQuery. J 
jQuery will start out as a JavaScript and um, library. Now they're trying to do a little bit more in terms of helping you build application, but you know, there are a number of libraries out there that just provide you with a set of reusable code that you can call to get things done, but they don't really necessarily provide the uh, hooks for you to really um, pre um, do life cycle management. They don't do life cycle management. And this is going to become a little bit clearer just now. Spa just single, simply means single page web application. And it's kind of a new way people have been constructing web applications these days and they're more responsive. And the reason I call them single pages is because you could think of it that when you visit the website, all the pages um, download for the application, which is not actually quite true, but kind of um, true. And that's why they think of it as a single page because it's almost like everything downloads. And then as you navigate around, there are parts of the page that you see get rendered is just um, a template or a small snippet of the entire page. But don't let that confuse you. It's just all terminology. They call it single page web application. It's not quite a single page. As you can see, when you develop your application, it's going to be in many pages. Uh, it's just the way in which things are done and it makes it a little bit more responsive. So that's the important part. part. It, you know, your pages are a lot more responsive. There's some other aspects of it, like the fact that um, since most of the page downloads to your browser, it doesn't have to request the individual pages anymore. And so all it really needs to do is make requests for the data that's going to populate the page. And that's going to make sense as we keep doing examples. All right. As I said before, um, the difference between a framework and a library is generally you can get any number of libraries and you, you tend to say, I built my application using this library. And a library is just a package of reusable code. In JavaScript, there's no other way to package libraries other than JavaScript itself. So you write JavaScript code, and then you also release the same JavaScript code as a library. In other languages, you tend to write in one language or compile in one thing, and then you create a library in something totally different. And don't really worry about that, no. The difference with like a framework, I say, a framework tends to do life cycle management. But then it says, okay, your application, I know it needs to start here, ends here, or get this, or get that or handle most clicks, and I'm gonna help take care of some of that stuff for you. And so that's the big difference, really. Think of a framework as being um, more invasive in terms of in your code, and providing you more hooks, and doing more of the heavy lifting for you to help write a completed artifact, whatever that is, an application or whatever. And so if we look at this slide now and the pros and cons of framework versus library, and this is not to be taken like one is better than the other one. It depends on what you're trying to do. So then you might want to write an application. You want it to be really small. You want to be, you know, write it your own way. And all you need are some libraries that give you reusable code. And so all you might do is use libraries to build your application. Other times, like what we're doing or what I'm trying to show you, is to me the important thing is to try and get your solution and the application finished and no point in trying to redo all the stuff. Even though a library would help you out and not make you do everything, um, you still have to do quite a bit more than if you use a framework. So that's why I say, as you guys see, we'll use libraries to give our application a certain look and feel. And then we're going to use Angular to take care of most of the stuff to make this a working application for the web. And you'll see why that becomes handy. So this, uh, this table is really just to show you the pros and cons, but it's not to say that one is better than the other. You will have to make that decision as you go along and you learn. But I'd say starting off, you might want to start using frameworks and then later on try to understand the library approach if you want. So we're at the end here of this video. I hope you enjoyed this first introduction to AngularJS. Uh, I didn't want to make it too technical or whatever um, to bore you, but I heard, hope you learned something. It piqued your interest and you're excited. If you are, great. And if you haven't subscribed before, please do. Please tell others to subscribe. Um, if you like the material, you like what I'm doing, I would really like to see it in the form of subscription and use spreading the word. Um, other than that, thanks for your time, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and have fun. Bye-bye.